Some of you survived that pandemic, not. See, folks, how that works? It went by the script. It's going by the script. But some of you crickets did survive, so I guess I have more th more people to speak to, right? Until we get it right. We start moving into what we need to do, focusing on what's really important. And I ask just anything that you need to do that you find wrong, that you want to make right, focus in on that and start in. I come every week to offer you ways uh, relative to the so-called news. It's the notice of what's going on. And you can pick any one of those things and help. Uh, if you find it wrong, you can help make it right. There are ways to do that. I know some of those, I mean, I didn't like making book reports either, but that seems to be how this thing, this place is wired. My thoughts are because of, well, at least my experience, when you, you're you going to be attacked, or whatever, even you will be attacked, and your stuff will be attacked. And lots of people think they have a say over it, and in fact, when you get right down to that black and white, what people run away from, what I call, we call the law, even the statutes, even the codes, even the rules, there's savings clauses inside that for where you be where you have right to your stuff and no one else does and all i've been asking for over a decade now is that you start looking for that instead of just complaining about what you see last week we got this big deal about this uh common cold actually in fact i was looking at a video last night random house 1989 medical dictionary showed this coronavirus is just a common cold and we're not even hearing what what the virus is that uh, actually the influenza that they'd be talking about. It's an orthomyxo virus. Don't even hear about that one. So, but here we have, I'm going to show proof some of it and then I'm going to move on. I'm not going to talk too much more about this thing. But before I get there, I just found out today, this is two, two, and I don't do this too much, but two, 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 zero, two, zero. It's uh, for all you groundhogs finding what you're scaring you by your shadow. This is the start for RLM this month only and every year. Uh, we Grimner only asks for donations to keep the servers and stuff up once a month. And he also happened to pick the, the, the shortest month of the year, so we try to keep this pain down. You'll only hear this from me periodically anyway. Uh, but we are in the no donation month for those of you that can help in any amount. And what this does is helps Grimner pay for the services of the website at RLM. Radio Real Liberty Media dot com. It's how you hear all this from all the sources that you may get it. The Real Liberty Media website is where this stems from. It starts out, and so this is the month he asks for donations. So we keep it simple. There's no, uh, there's I guess ways that you can get to the website if you want to go use Amazon do some throughout the year. You can donate at any time, but this is the more formal time we do on February. And this is Groundhog Day, so even all your groundhogs that are coming out, and you see you got a couple dollars in your pocket or more, uh, maybe head it on over to Real Liberty Media and do a donation uh, to, uh, again, pay for the service. It keeps the archive up as well. I'm most interested that all the hard drives and stuff for the archive, and, and because Grimner just volunteers his time at all this. As all that I understand, all of us do the same thing. We just volunteer our time to keep you keep the message coming, and I really do hope you appreciate there are no commercials. There's no interruptions otherwise throughout the year. There's no breaks every 15 or 10 minutes i can i can get onto this broadcast network and just just stream away point by point you know as i always run out of time so uh, that's a big deal for me to not be interrupted every few minutes and at the top of the hour for for 15 or whatever it is so i hope you all appreciate that uh, I, I, I know i do if you can so donate where you can i know we have people doing don regular donations you can even do that grammy mary again i thank her for Donating to the Spreaker account that gets us out through another bunch of channels. So this is help everybody helping as they can keeps this little this little state network out for as uh, censored as I think it is as I've been finding. We don't turn up very many places, and as for a small listenership as seems to be maintained, I realize that over ten years we've had a dedicated listenership, and I'm, I just wanted to thank everybody for being there and helping to keep the word out. Eventually we get to more and more people. It's slow. But, I, you know, I, I see some of the changing. I see the words. Cha I see the conceptually people coming to terms with the, these things I talk about if they're not actually putting them in practice. And I just have to wa I've watched this for a long time. I just have to be patient that the crickets don't prevail ultimately. And in particular, where we have all the power. We really do have a power. We just have to focus in on it like the laser, the uh, laser beam, and do just because there's so many problems, we just we're, we're, we outnumber all the problems, actually, that we can just focus in and, 
and do the fix the one wrong we might find and as we go along we might find others so appreciate all the donations that will come you've been very faithful about that i appreciate that and uh, so that's that's this is the month right now if you can remember we have a whole month to keep it going i know grimner appreciates to not have to think about it and he can keep providing this services for us all anyway the rest of you crickets that just won't do anything <laughs> uh we'll keep listening we'll well, you groundhogs today, you're out. Did you see your shadow or not? I didn't even look. I don't really care. Uh, the point is, is that's uh, that's more of our entertainment. It might be fun for people back, you know, back in Pennsylvania or wherever else they create a create a groundhog. And or otherwise, you can look out in the nature and see whether you can anticipate something for a, while. We get to the weather a little bit on that. Be careful that we seem to be going to a, like a little bit of a warming a warming spell. But Russia is seeing some intensely cold weather, and I'm. Not sure how long or if that's going to transition over to uh, the other side of the world. So we're going to, we might see a late spring type thing or springtime freeze. We get those, the blossoms come out, and then you get that freeze. So, uh, so be careful on, be ca uh, on Puxitani Phil's uh, view. He only comes out for the one day and he's forced to do that. I would hope we can do better for ourselves and not be forced, learn how not to be forced to do much of anything and really be free, not live in free dumb. Not just that we hear the dumb, but we also realize the dumb, dumb is a domain. It's a free domain. It has a frame of constraint within which a free movement can happen. But when you understand it that way, it's it, it's not free. And so what I advocate is trying to show you how to, despite what you see as a control structure, despite what you might vilify as government, to show you how you, when you understand the law that, ought to be, and I say ought because there's a challenge to it, because no one sips it up, that ought to be reflected and is in the evidence, and to get less esoteric, in patent law, you see patent evidence of the right exclusive of the whole world against a property, even the government, to interfere. And then you find within the statutory frameworks of the government, you see statutes that are hands off of that, in other words, they can't interfere on their authority, even written down as their authority, then you start realizing where you need to situate yourself and as I suggest to you how you respond and you don't make questions where they don't you know make an issue a question for someone to decide you take away their power because it's not in them you can hand it to them and they might presume it upon you but it's not there really and so this is not a really an argument it's not a fight it's not who knows more in that in, I mean as a bulk of knowledge it's it's you're asking essentially the word but what what is your power in breaking finding the first element which is jurisdiction and jurisdiction in the best evidence i can find for you that's that should be easy to see self evident is evidenced in these patents that everyone who lives on a piece of land at least in america that's private it has one underneath all that that evidences to you the limit of government why people will not listen behind a woodshed will be, fan uh, be engaged in the sensationalism of a coronavirus when it's clear it's not a uh, harm. And if you want to see a harm, there's a vi I just found a video. You really have, in fact, I'll give you a link for that later. You really have to understand how decimating to the pop oral population the so-called Spanish flu was. You'll also notice the real vector. And so there's a whole real lesson to be learned about what a real global killer is. And uh, let's get over to this now. Thank you again for all your donations to come in the past just to keep us going. I appreciate it to support what we're doing here at the network and what really Grimner does, tons and tons of work. Again, gratis to him, uh, from him to us. Uh, that I want to point out, again, I told you, watch the script. The coronav coronavirus declared global health emergency was a title. I'm not going to go and discuss this more just to point out something. Uh, what didn't they, again, the silence, the answers in the silence, what didn't they declare it? And the idea for me is then what, what, why did they declare anything short of the, of the, what they were supposed to declare that they were working toward? So the title is the coronavirus declared a global health emergency. Uh, who done it? The new coronavirus, new novel, the engineered coronavirus, the engineered common cold to be worse has been declared a global emergency by the World Health Organization, the WHO, not the rock group, not the owl, as the outbreak continues to spread outside of China. But they didn't mention, they didn't declare it what, folks? This is the key. 
And I told you they couldn't until they did what last week? They have to run by their script. And they only run novel stuff. They don't run all the stuff after, after this. This is going to go in the back door and they're going to wait for another one to, to find. And there's thousands and thousands of them and they mutate. So they'll find them forever and to keep control. They didn't declare what? A pandemic. And they had to make, this WHO organization had to make themselves relevant to say something. And so they said it was a global health emergency. And so here we are, predictive of what the future had to be by the script they already have. And that script is written in other ways, and other subject matters. I try to tell you to identify, read it, get out of fear-based mode, get, get back into reality. If you want to know how serious it could have gone, what I was saying, that needle in the haystack that was there, you got to go see how devastating the, the actual Spanish flu was. Now it was just a name. It wasn't where it, how it started. And how that, what the vector of that mechanism was, and I'll just tell you, it was, it was war. And it was transportation of troops that spread that thing all over the place. However, it was actually created. It got into the world. There's evidences for lots of different theories. And so, again, it's all hype. You know, I've been asking you to get out of the hype, find the relevance, look at the real danger. Don't ever not look at the real danger, but focus on what's important to you. Focus on, on what I would call the daily grind, if you will, of, of stopping the oppression against us. So I respond in the Twitter. You can find this. A hype, uh, it was uh, Gerald Salintra, in fact. He says, the, the Gerald Salintra says, coronavirus hyped despite WHO state of emergency. And I answer, hyped, yes, but not despite. The declaration of global emergency is the concession pandemic is not expected pursuant to the WHO script, as I explained last week. And uh, they also issued this, this declaration to make the WHO to be perceived as continually relevant in their pandemic simulation and the test of the medical martial law they impose and are imposing. And I say mission accomplished to all that. This is I told you last week. And then I uh, refer to, uh, because uh, Gary L. refers us to what he found on the Deagle site about the population being decimated in the coming decade, uh, that I found a video discussing the 1918 Spanish flu. And again, that's just a term. That's not where it originates. It happens to be the only country that had an open press that could report on it, as the other governments were keeping everybody covered up with the information. They couldn't just, they weren't disclosing what was going on. Spain uh, media was the only one that was... Pr talking about this Spanish flu, and that's why it got this name. It wasn't where, how it got caused, or the causation. Uh, that there was a 1918 Spanish flu historic documentary that shows inside near the end uh, that there's a current one now that's hit the news, the H5N1, that is way more dangerous, that just hit the news right after they couldn't get their pandemic. And they're starting to push that at the same time. But you'll hear right in this video link I'll show you, the H5N1 hasn't been shown to be able to go from human to human yet. And the reason why I say yet is because in this documentary, in the middle of it somewhere, they show scientists that are working on it to, to make these things, we know them as weaponized. They, they're telling us they're doing it so they understand the potential so they can fight them. So that was the scary part. H5N1 that they're promoting now, during the flu season that we see peaked, and peaking, in fact, the Chinese government came out right after I did the broadcast and declared that this thing's going to be, they're thinking this is going to start tapering off really quickly. That they then bring out the H5N1, but it's, but be careful not to get blown up about it. And chickens are dying over it and it's serious, but it's not one of the human to human variants yet that the documentary says they could be working on that. Why I tell you about the needle in the haystack. Not for us today, not really for us, our indication, except for it's flu season. Tis the, tis the season, folks. Tis the flu season. Let's be prepared. Hygiene, sanitation, isolation, the things that we should do. Just common sense tells us all how to do that. And then when you get it, you know, fortify your, your nutrition. And then when you get it, keep yourself isolated and take care of yourself. I guess that's the only thing. You have, all you health have you is your health, and they keep wanting to attack it. Now, while all that's going on, and there's no nothing more than a global health emergency because it's flu season, folks, and hundreds of thousands of people can die just because it's the common cold and it gets bad and people are weak and immune systems go nuts and the world is not necessarily a healthy place 
And so that happens. And so it's, it is a global health emergency, but it's not that pandemic they fabricate. And it didn't match the simulation they needed on the ob- on what we think is obvious, but it certainly proved out they will be able to and can exercise medical martial law. And so, But what they didn't, they won't claim in the United States. Now, the, the United States has picked that up and said it's an emergency. No one's declaring it a pandemic because it's not. That's got a, a very finite list to go by. The, the, this is an older story. Now I'll bring on uh, forever chemicals found in drinking water in 34 additional locations in the United States by the EPA, or the Environmental Working Group, uh, excuse me, where Environmental Working Group found. Not even new news. I told you this year, years and years ago when they were just talking about set, particular areas with water problems. I said, no, these, the, the water across the country and municipal water supplies is tainted in ways that people have don't know yet. And so we have another another report now. That while we have this focus on, yeah, people are dying on the coronavirus, but certainly not n- near the numbers that could die to the normal flu that comes every year that they don't report on. They're also not looking very carefully at the health implications of what we referred to before the PFASs, these uh, chemicals that are in the water that are like, they don't go away. These are really the things that just don't disappear. They're persistent. And so I want you to point, you know, this is where, I don't know who was interested, uh, not the who, not the rock group, not the owl, not even the WHO. Uh, those of you who may be interested, you pick up this as the proof of what I was saying before. Anybody could jump in in any of this subject matter and they can start to point out there are certain, um, I guess the main one of the main things is there's certain things that, they protect against, and it's the risk management side, not the hazard. As long as they can get away with poisoning you all, that's good enough. And where do I get that? I got that a long time ago when I ran across Title 50 of the United States Code and the reservations to the government and the contractors to government to harm you all. And then relative to looking back even further and saying, well, why are they harming us in these tests and these things that went on? Isn't there a law? Well, there is a law, but there's a reservation to the the government, whatever that thing is, and people inside it to harm you. And it all ends up being rolling down to, and it happens, the Title 50 happens to be your War Department code. If you don't really quite get, you live in a military consequences, consequence and have. And I told you, in, well, I went to crickets in 2012, finally, when it rolled out, come out of the woodwork, what was going on, they threw even that all down. Remember, they got rid of the Libra Code. They threw all that down and went to uh, executive expedience. There is no law. Now, that said, when you have an occupier like that, international, now we go to international law because that's where we're at. We've always been there. International law says that the natives better get real restless and throw this off. And when I hit 2012 and no one was looking at the murder memo of 2010, and they came out and declared all this as, as the fact. Uh, I went to crickets. I've been going to crickets until we can get our head wrapped around all this nonsense they pull off to uh, against us and stop it. Again, the Virginia se- uh, so-called 2A, uh, Second Amendment, which is not, it's their uh, what Section 13 right to bear arms. Uh, that, uh, again, I keep looking at that. Very interesting. The head, of, The beginning of that Constitution really lays out how you go about the methodological way of going through and applying that to every other subject matter is exactly what I told you. I've been saying for years how you go about it. And so it's funny, again, I told you, is if you look in the right places, you follow the narrow path of the things that actually should be done instead of all the opinions and, and shrugging the shoulders and whatever all else the people do, not answering the, 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 not answering the first step with jumping in the middle of the pond and then complaining you can't swim in the deep, when you lay down the path correctly, anybody else who lays down the path correctly will find the objective evidence of that. And you find out all y'all are standing next to each other shoulder to shoulder. Y'all get to the stinking abyss looking at the same way. And you'll also find out that the objective basis we would call laws and codes, when you knew how to read it, tells us all that. It tells us exactly how to keep these guys in check. The question is, will we? And my question now is, once you've I've told you behind the woodshed how to do this. Why won't you? Is a problem of our society. It is a problem of how we are not fulfilling what we ought to have done. And people, 
And the rule is you will be taken advantage because of that. That's not my rule. I'm not trying to put any of this on you. I wish I didn't have to do this. If I didn't have to do this, I wouldn't be here. In fact, none of us would probably be here this way anyway. So while the, this, this common flu is going around the world during flu season, I told you exactly how the script would lay out. To me, I'm putting it aside. We get the proof, if not days later, they're not going to go to a pandemic. That they don't look at the bad water in the country. And I'm telling you that boy, bad water is bad only to a limit, a minimum limit. And I've told you, just like the Clean Water Act, it's not an act to clean water. It's an act to pollute it so much. And as long as you, uh, you announce that you've polluted within a certain, I think it's 48 hours, they're going to give you license to continue. You have to stop it, but they give you, they, it, it's a pat on the hand. It's not a head is really what it is, not a hand. If you don't say, then you get the penalties. It's not about polluting. It's about just polluting so much. This is, again, the rule under war, under Title 50 of the United States Code. And I try to just tell you this. It may sound like a broken record. This is not just an opinion and an idea. All this is written down for us to see. And when the more of you read all this and see it, less of this stuff becomes a surprise, not because you just, you're just cynical about it, because you see the rule. You see how it's going to go down. And then the only next question is, is there anything you're going to do about it? And sometimes there's not much you can do, but in a lot of places I've found that, that you can. And you've heard me over the years explain part of what we do. So while they, uh, again, the coronavirus, they're not going to go after the water like I told you they wouldn't. It's all part of the part of the risk and part of the allowance of pollution. And there's a reality behind that, too. So before you go too far... When you have an industrialized, modernized, um, I can't say modernized because that's the new stuff, the new corruption, the, the industrialized society, you're going to have waste. And so the point about it, and you will have these pollutions, and we need to not conflate this, this fraud called climate change with it. We need to actually focus on keeping our nest clean, if you will. And that's part of the production. That's, or, Yeah, the manufacturing is production, right? It's not tertiary economy. It's not in the government side. It's in the base that keeps the society going. We have to do a better job at, at doing that. While we focus on climate change, it's a fraud. We're not we're not cleaning our water. We're agreeing to commercial applications of viruses for vaccines that are novel against us instead of fighting that. Within the Title 50, there's there's consent that is required. Do any of you actually engage that? I don't think many of you do. I can't say nobody because it went through us before quite a few years ago that that came through. I don't know what, what people did with it. There's notices you can send. Well, whatever they do, they end up being your non-consent. They're actually better than a vote, if for those of you contrary to that. Uh, then, so we don't do the water, but we also, we, our food has a certain amount of problems with it. We find out now a study. I haven't had a chance to check this, but I'm going to run with it because it ref I don't respond well to it. Would you like brain damage with that? And not that I know about brain damage, but it just doesn't make my system, just doesn't work on it very well at all. A new research has shown that despite being marketed as a healthy alternative, soybean oil, America's most popular oil, causes neurological changes in brains of mice and that may contribute to autism and dementia in humans, you animals. What I talked about all about this, humans is a man is not a man, it's an animal. You, the title codes of the United States will tell you that. Uh, I think I can add, and I forgot to add with the last week's uh, suggestion to see Clint Richards' lethal injection, uh, he, uh, I also suggested to him not not just the Title 50 that he reads, min, uh, deep into the uh, his his documentary. It, earlier on, he discusses, I think, also this, uh, well, this point about you as a pest man, animal. I, I exposed to him Title 7 and Title 21. Man is a pest animal. You're a pest animal. You're not a man or a woman. And so this is how they do it, and this is what they do. They're only doing animal testing, and that's the thing that they're responding to that they can harm. And no man or woman steps up to stop it is, the, is, our, prob is our problem. But uh, now we see that this soybean oil is uh, causing problems. I can just tell you just how I deal with food is if I eat it and it doesn't work well with me, I just stop eating it. I used to be a whole lot worse until I stopped using pro eating processed food and eating out. A little bit more, a little less convenient, but I sure have been decades and decades of feeling better this also shows us that oils are something i got to be careful here to say certain oils and certain constructions are not so good for our bodies 
Uh, this one apparently is one. I suspect there's others. I believe canola is really more of an industrial solvent than it is a food source, but it's promoted, it's, it's produced as, uh, very highly. But there's, uh, if you look carefully at these uh, chains, these uh, uh, chemical chain, oil chains, the, the chain structuring is important. They can do damage. You mess with them, you can do damage. The, and so it, that's underlying all of this. They talk about uh, what in the mice they did, the animals that they chose to look at, what it works with. You'll get the link. You can start studying this. And this is not for me to say here. There's a report here about the, the, wor the badness of so soy. This is about really looking at the government allows it, like they do the water. And is that important to you or not? And what are you going to do to avoid it now if you see that? Or go study more and find that I'm wrong because I had relied on a study that I didn't go peer review myself, which I don't know if I could, or find other peer reviews. What are you doing to take this information and not have it adversely affect you? Understanding Alzheimer's and autism would be you coming into the world being dis disaffected and you going out of the world being disaffected. And then those of you in the middle that are creating the beginning, going to the end or disaffected because you're dealing with the beginning and the end is, to me, another weapon by the U.S. Army who is now working on a fully automated microaggression detector to catch implicit bias in the workplace. Uh, this this has to be a Monty Python script. The U.S. Army funds fully automated microaggression detector to catch implicit bias in the workplace. If you're affected by soy protein and uh, autism or dementia and you kind of try to do something in the workplace and you don't know you're partially affected, isn't this going to be an interesting future? And why is the U.S. military doing this for the workplace if you don't have a concept that we work in a military consequence and the military is always there? Always there, working to help control and check and keep in balance this thing so that they can figure out that the natives are getting restless and put a check on it. Fascinating little story here to me. I could, I was, my mind just started laughing, going through the idea of, can you imagine in the future they get something this, you look, read the story, the, the, the scientists, the professors and scientists are all excited about this. They can work to check these microaggressions. These are all fabricated as well but they get to check them. Can you imagine what a dis kind of a discussion is going to be like in the future for those of us that continue to allow it? When our little microaggression beeper goes off because some AI was deciding that you, you didn't treat someone equally? I can't even imagine the military doing this because can you imagine a squad, the parts of which have different job duties and different times when they would be used and effectual? But they would be left out of certain discussions because it wasn't necessity, necess, necessary at the moment that they have microaggression uh, alarms that, that you didn't talk to one of the guys in the squad. Same thing in business. Maybe somebody wasn't relevant to the discussion. All of a sudden, the, the AI knows you didn't talk to that, that employee. They're twisting this, although, to be a war between men and women. This microaggression meter is actually going to try and pick up how women are not uh, utilized in the workplace and they'll have a woman here to tell you how she's been had experience in that and she should have been listened to and she may have should have been listened to but can you imagine your future on ai when all your alarms and all your electronics is laying around feeding it uh, getting this data and the internet of things going at 5g speeds to these internet uh, ai pattern recognition systems coming back to dictate to your life what is going on? Now, they won't check the bad water. They won't check that maybe they're, or the oils are causing you to be this way. My actual aggressions that you don't quite pick up on. Maybe you're just not any tolerant anymore of the, of the nonsense your work, your employee has given you, or vice versa, even a, even a boss. Can you imagine how this works? You, as people, accept the, the largest oil producing uh, product be used is actually diminishing your society and they come in to do these checks in your life these things to roll over your life and you become incapable of actually keeping up with it or avoiding it because you don't know any better is this been ongoing thing the the scrutiny that they do under what's smart s-m-a-r-t means something remember i go through that periodically i guess we can do that right now to remind you this is sustainability, the imposition of sustainability. That's S. Mitigation is M. They mitigate the response that you have to their imposition. Adaption, 
how that system adapts to continue to be able to mitigate your response to it. Resilience, that system's ability to withstand your resistance and transformation where they've done all the analysis of the data and they've taken you and transformed you into something that you are not a threat to that system that is the future they want is this thing under military investment and research. They'll, they'll not check your, the food properly. The, the, again, the vaccines are not safe. They're just risk management. Everything's risk management. Your water has these chemistries in them that do uh, dysfunctional things to you. And you're getting into a place in these urban areas that you're just trapped. And so this is, a, again, as, as I looked at the corner vibes, look at the future of how this thing works. This, again, the ta- it's a repeating story in different areas all the time. And I, I guess I'm just still astonished that people don't respond. They'll talk and memify and be memetics and argue with each other, but they really don't take a step to stop the inherent nonsense in a system, the caucusocracy essentially, that stepped up that we were to check. And again, Virginia is a very interesting model for this, and I'm surprised, again, it's not moving along very well. They're, they're not going to their constitutional authorities. They are working behind the scenes. It's turning out in Virginia relative to their their um, legislative session, just like I told you it would in 2013. The way they stay ahead of us and the way we're always two steps behind as a society, and we don't have to take it, but we end up taking it and make excuses for why we're taking it. And that's not a good answer. And so doing all these checks for the nation, national security, they claim, Again, this is all written in the War Department, Title 50. If you just go read it, it's all, it's a big read, but it's all there. It's all what I've been telling you about. This brings us up to what the 9, 9 2001 brings up to what I've told you about why that, what, that they went and done it. They imposed like the next big step, really the, a giant step here to destroy mankind and put us into this global control underneath models and things like the WHO phase list. It's all written like that. And uh, here we have another story of something I've been telling you about. This may or may not go so well because here's the resistance now coming where they want to keep you messed up on in your mind. They also want to keep attacking you uh, in your travels. And we have back to the TSA making women take d- down pants and take down pants and underwear, which they determine not a strip search. And this comes back out of the professional troublemaker. And that's, I think, Jonathan Corbett. And he's the, uh, now I found out he's a, the attorney. And he's on that case I was telling you about. So this is the uh, nonsense that you're up against uh, with the TSA, with the government generally, as they impose a military consequence and excuse of fraud under the color of national security, which I've explained to you. That, you can just lay that at the unwarranted imposition. That's a felony in in every state I've checked at. Uh, But no one wants to assert this stuff that way. No one wants to make the record. In fact, this case is coming after, before a record was made. Uh, but you'll read through this thing, how the government will justify. I mean, how is it that you order anyone to take down their pants and underwear, and that's not a strip search? It is the lunacy of the people, the psychopathy of the people that you're dealing with. And in, it's not. I don't read these things to see this. I read for the non-psychology, the psychology that they try to utilize in order to, when you go do something against a mentality like this, what are what are you going to anticipate? This article will tell you that there's actually been some court cases, for those of you that are interested in travel uh, internationally or even coming in among states around you, that there's insertions of excuses that they use, that if you had the knowledge of what the courts have already done, you could anticipate that at the point your contact of contact and possibly eliminate these minimally embarrassments, if not just you know, the atrocious treatment of people, the disrespect uh, understand that to take the clothes off of an animal is not a, their consideration, is not an insult. And, and so this is a dub, this duality of re- review that you have to go through. Why are they doing it when it doesn't make any sense? That's you applying to something that doesn't, isn't receiving that. That's you applying a principle that's no longer in that thing. And you expect it to, to meet you. It can't. And it's not going to. And so there's a a certain way 
and it's in the rules if you look at it, I've been telling you, to approach this. So the absurdity of requiring women to take down their pants, to, so, I won't read this, well, in fact, they say the TSA has been pretty clear, I'll read a little bit of this, that they uh, do not conduct strip searches at the checkpoint. In fact, they even reiterated it to the media last year when I filed a suit, this is uh, Jonathan Corbett, in behalf of Rhonda Mengert, a grandmother from Las, Angeles, Las Vegas, Nevada, who was ordered to take down her pants and underwear and show them a feminine hygiene pad. I mean, I don't even know where to go beyond that. Where are we that we, as a society, we allow it? And I can tell you that there's no real rule that does because they're supposed to do the least. If you look right in the rules, it says it's the least invasive to do what they're supposed to do. And I said they've been violated your presumption of innocence to start with. And so stepping into the first, the first foundational step is very important to identify. But how absurd it's getting the insults that are going that are excused by those psychopaths and sociopaths in government that use the color of government to do this is the felony against us uh, daily. And you and I, I say bring it up to trees and making war on the, on the laws of the United States and the people those laws were supposed to protect under the color of a national security. Why? Because you need to come up against their imperative, their, nece- their necessity, the state's necessity, uh, before you're going to even have a chance. And so... The again, this is understanding your battlefield. If you don't assert this thing as a, this national security excuse as a fraud, they won't. You, you won't get the time of day, even so. And if you can do it administratively, even better, even yet. So again, it's just understanding what's going on. Anticipate you're going to be strip search with these people if you go anywhere. I'm asking those of you that are, feel that's a violation. There's a way to engage it. I've done broadcasts in the past to explain it. The rules tell you what they're supposed to do. Jonathan Corbett will explain to you that the prior court cases won't allow this. So we're going to see where this goes in this lawsuit. But expect every excuse against what you thought was a good thing and uh, ex- ex- uh, every uh, every excuse against reason because ultimately when you look at the rules, they don't treat you. You're not a man or a woman. You're an animal that needs to be, that is domesticated, that needs to be contained. You're a vector as well to this problem that they've invented that is sits in executive expedience, not judicial due process. And this next story, based in that little view there, was astonishing to me a bit. It hit a little bit hard because when I talk to you about evidence, as we're talking documented evidence, like your patent is a big piece of paper in a record somewhere, you'd expect that, that shouldn't be tampered with. But here was a story from the National Archives relative to all the evidence that they you might make or you might find in the archives now comes under scrutiny. When you find this, this was out of Twitter, out of Cynthia McKinney's site, uh, web post. Shame on the National Archives for altering documents which scholars around the globe rely on for factual information. Uh, this, is a, this is a real serious condition. National Archives tampering with documents. This happened to be with an innocuous picture relative to the Trump election. Can you imagine, now we're to the point, when people even thought they could start altering documentation, evidences of history. And I want to, con- that is a startle because that is starting to send the message, like we see what happens in China to install martial law, break the ice on that concept. Well, if they can do it, oh, the, the, if they can do that, maybe we can go to more documents and we can alter them. Or... We can now put on the idea that those documents do not really evidence anything, which is the bigger problem because why? The modernization takes away property. If they get rid of your evidence or they make it corrupt and not trustable, then you can't rely on it as evidence. And then you don't have the you can't prove your property. Now, this is just over a picture. This telegraphs a real big problem here. Am I saying that they're never they're all going to get rid of that? Well, I don't think they really can. What happens is the presumptions start working against you. Everything becomes a question. It really works down to what I've been telling you to make sure you do anyway. You have to get certified copies of things now. You have to get the 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 authority, the law that allowed that. So now you have the 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 law and then the witness that it was executed. You have to start bringing together your bag of law, your bag of proof for whatever you do. Because we're now looking at the 
They're going after the heart of what the, the what protects the republic is the evidence is in the offices of record. So this doesn't go to the point of your land yet. This was a re, it's a telegraphic. It's kind of what I would tell you what set the alarm for me when they went they said the jurisdictions in the United States were going to put property in blockchain. Oh, it's secure. Well, no, it isn't. And it can certainly be tampered with. They say they can't. What about all the hacks? What about all the information that gets put in that then you can't change once it gets in? How do you change it? No, there's a you don't do it on the electrons anyway. You have to do it in documentary form in paper. See, the MERS condition was done. No one would produce those original ink signatures, which is crucial for tracking how something went through to maintain property. And so this is underwriting everything. Property and the proof of it and the ability to proof it and prove it up is critical, especially when you try to do a remedy. That's why I told you about the Virginia Constitution. Who has the right to go do it? By what authority? What's the property? Go in the document itself. The, con the contract says you don't mess with that property. That's why I was saying you go through that because this is the same attack. You don't have an objective proof in the document that you're using. Like the Constitution is no different than this archive. She says, shame. I was seeing a little bit different story here. You know, again, enough to tell you about it. Corrupting history. Very important. How do we know? We go to, we go to digital stuff. We live our digital life. Wow, I don't even know what to tell you anymore. There's no paperless office in this land stuff, in this land law. I can tell you that. And so I, I pause here. Think about these things. These are, if you haven't thought about them and you don't think that, that they, they're relevant, I'm suggesting to you strongly to reconsider your position there. They're absolutely relevant. And this next story coming up, homesteaders, catastrophists run for the hills to flee United States uncertainty. Now, I don't know about all this. It came from the Reuters Foundation, but it's telling us we're getting a pushback of people that just, they're the, the people that want to be living a little more free. They're called homesteaders. I don't know if that's the case. But they're coming out of urban areas and running back to the so-called rural, the countryside. This, to me, is an interesting dynamic because what they're trying to put on us in the military and sustainable side is already being responded to where people, and this has been going on for a couple of years now, the urban areas, are people are fleeing from places like California. They're moving into places like Idaho. I did that report as well. And that's causing some problems. The problem with this is on production side, you have people running out of the cities who don't know a first thing about production side going into places where we need that production. And where you have that land rights, not as a deed, a warranty deed, but as a patent right, which undercuts all, all governmental authority within the context of that conveyance. So homesteaders are catastrophists are running for the hills to flee U.S. uncertainty. Well, I don't know what all this U.S. uncertainty, this is kind of self-inflicted wounds. This was a, an indication that the smart future, we there's a few that are already jumping ship, and I, I would encourage it, but when you get out in the rural, in the countryside, really become really think about becoming the producer. Just don't take your urban life and put it into a new place and contaminate that way, that place, because you're going to cover over the evidence that I'm speaking of before, that your records are proving they why they can't do the why it's unlawful not just that they did it but why it's unlawful and that there's a mechanism trying to be voiced that's going to undermine your ability to show and prove your separateness where a jurisdiction like the United States is causing trouble you know, I'll just read a little bit here to cheap uh, housing deep unease and intense resilience wow are we stealing back one of the smart functions <laughs> An intense resilience, all forces that are driving a clutch of Americans to swap city life for the fresh start off grid, fresh start off grid and for far from civilization. Well, it's not so far, folks. You're within a border. And that's what I try to tell people here. You want to, you may deny that you're within a jurisdiction, but you can't. You got, you're in that jurisdiction. It has the power if you don't understand what's working against you. You have to acknowledge it and then you understand it. If you, when you acknowledge it, you also know where the limits are. Until you acknowledge it, it presumes it's doing benefit for you to beat you down. Just because you're that unruly slave. And so the Virginia Constitution explains a little bit of that too. Not enslaved or being beat down, but it says the government is subject to a certain status. That certain status also has certain needs. 
And so it, I talk almost in circles here. Just doesn't matter how we get at it. There's a contingent of people fleeing the urban to get back into the countryside. I, I, I would encourage it, but it, people are going to have to get into being producers again uh, and not going into these areas and trying to bring the city with them. I think that's the underlying problem here. As people think they're free of mind, but they're, they're not, their mind is controlled, whether by soy oil or not. Their mind is controlled by what they think they know, that I've certainly found for myself isn't so, uh, for the condition. And I've, uh, for 10 years or 11 years now, explained how all of that is, how all what we've been told isn't really so, and how to make that correction. Cheap housing. I don't know if it's so cheap. And the dollar's going down. So we have all kinds of problems. So the cheap, the homesteader runs out. He's not really a homesteader. He could be partly a homesteader if he went to the patent and found it was issued by homestead. But these people coming out of the urban areas today are not homesteaders. They're just going to get back to a, li a lifestyle that uh, appears to be that. Uh, to be an actual homesteader, you can only be the assignee to a homesteader. And so these, these terms become very interesting in identifying who's doing what and that they don't know what they're doing. Again, if you don't, if you speak, you know, just listening, uh, Larkin Rose, I just, I'm fixing in on what, what Larkin's problem is. I've been troubled by what he does, not to disregard his, the beating down he took by the government, but I explained all that. He jumps in on the second step I've been noticing now. He speaks only to authority, but what you're actually looking for is who has the power. And uh, paraphrased in, in the definition of power includes jurisdiction. And you don't get to authority until you establish jurisdiction. And for me, listen, listening to statements of people, when they're not speaking correctly, they don't understand the condition, I'm reticent to follow through any further on what their suggestions are. And I go back to my, my training, my education, what I've done for myself, trying to figure this place out, that you have to be very careful on not being led by the nose because it sounds good. And again, setting down with a foundation has been all critical for me, at least for me, to be able to figure how to parse through some of this stuff. Sounds really good up on the surface, but they walk themselves into a, a cul-de-sac, essentially, a mental cul-de-sac, which supports their position. And as I've explained to some other people that are also well-researched, well that had a different view, that they were subject, I said, you're presuming you're subject instead of taking your innocence and leading with that. Uh, that's confusing to people when I say that, but that's what we do. We rail against authority, but we haven't established jurisdiction. Once we have jurisdiction, then we see where the authority works. That establishes the, the definition of power. To jump in on what an authority is, is the wrong step first. You, you, can, just, you can say there's an authority there, you can discuss it, but you're not telling me where its confines will be. And when, as I'm showing you and explaining, like, evidences of the exclusion of property from interference by government through the patent, and you can read it right in there, the black and white, the evidence of that, then you understand what I'm saying. You understand there may be an authority saying something, but do they have jurisdiction over what the statements are that they purport their authority wields? And if they don't have jurisdiction... They don't have a place to wield it, or that place is a trespass. You've got them. And as I've explained to you, if you can identify that and they do it under color, that's a felony inside a government official. The problem isn't that. Once you do that, that's, the, that's cool because now you can identify your distinction. What's the real problem is the remedy. And they're working. the system is working against that so that you don't have the evidence that you can show where the limit of the jurisdiction, or the, the jurisdiction that you have is beyond their limit. Again, this, this Virginia Constitution, not, it just kind of keeps coming in my mind. That laid out so nicely that I told you the other day. I, I don't know why more people aren't picking that up and passing that around. I really am kind of dismayed at that. In the first four uh, sections of that Constitution, it, it lays out the co complaint. It lays out your cause. It lays out who. It lays out how. It eliminates all the other nonsense. And yet I don't hear you see many people understanding that in the first place, and not many people actually embracing it. And this is really all I talk about is how to go about making it uh, relevant to you and being able to exclude others. Instead of agreeing there's an authority that you disagree with. 
I don't. I told you, don't disagree with an authority. Just identify it's not over you and how. You got not just say it. You got to be able to prove it. And a lot of people don't like that. But so here we have a homesteader. They're running out in the countryside. There's still going to be an over overarching threat. While the government's not watching your water and not worrying about the oils and not the and wrongly promoting the coronavirus, they're also remember reported reported about this. The U.S. engine go geoengineering research gets its money. From Congress. To do what? Do geoengineering to, to protect us from climate change and global warming. But there, the government is not in, the, in any, any desire or intention to protect you from things of harm or actually use other than fraud to perpetrate the crime against you. And this geoengineering is another one under Title 50, which requires your consent. And I ask again, how many of you are sending now to Congress and this, where this money is going, these, these professors that are going to do that program to do some high aerosol, stratospheric aerosol dumping, in this case of sulfur dioxide, I think. Uh, how many of you have sent a letter saying you do not consent to this, notwithstanding the appropriation? You say, well, what for? Just because. Why don't you just humor me? Why don't you just send it in, cite the Title 50 that they here, gives you the right, and then now look at that and persist that they make sure that they don't. Why don't you prepare a record that shows that you're one that's standing against instead of, like we were talking in Virginia, creating an ineffectual, impotent sanctuary. Go ahead and exercise the things that the black and white says first and keep pressing and then getting masses of people to do that before you complain it's not working. And then, as we see in Virginia, when you see it's not working, you now have shown the right to alter and abolish what's nonsense you're being attacked by under the color of protecting you from an attack. The U.S. geoengineering research gets its lift with $4 million to Congress. Uh, big story here. But now they're going to put dump more chemicals in the space. That didn't seem to stop them. Again, you've got to look at the reality here. I'm not talking more here, but to me this is not news. We we we've already reported on this. They're going to go ahead and do it to you, you rats, you you pests, you human pest animals. That's Title I think seven, maybe Title Twenty One. You go read, you will find it. Go read very carefully. All you have to do is start writing your objections in the proper way by the proper authority, not just that you say, oh, I hate geoengineering. Say, Title 50 requires my consent. You don't have it. Talk to your friends. Have them send the stuff in. Go do some research for yourself. Uh, the top climate change scientist for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that they have received $4 million from Congress and permission from his agency to study two emergencies the controversial methods to cool the earth if the U.S. and the other nations fail to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Folks, I don't know what to tell you, but there it is. They, uh, they went right through the agency to get permission. That required your uh, your notice back that they're not gonna, you have no there's no consent. Right in the per first paragraph is your answer. Have you followed through? What I found interesting is right before that a couple weeks ago, and I never got to this this discussion, but I'm getting to it today in line. Again, with what the government will promote, what they should have promoted, and what they couldn't promote, what they will allow to go under the radar is harming you, continuing this attack upon us. We're crickets to all of it. Uh, attacks are done to try and bring on these new agendas. Uh, there is still some form, although, and this is the will explain how close we are to the destruction. There's still some form of resistance to nature, reality, and not sub submitting to this fraud, the thing called climate change, and other things modernized, and other things sustainable, and all these things you can find written that they want to do. And these, remember, sustainable is these viruses coming through who? It's all the UN. It's all on the moving the agenda forward. And when you see what the Spanish, I want to get back to the Spanish, how many people it kills, you realize this is this is just a sneeze, okay? And so get back to the Ninth Circuit. And what they've now touched, even though Congress just came out and gave the money, Ninth Circuit did an interesting thing here. But you'll see how close to the problem we are. And you'll see where in this case, I'm going to read a couple passages. You'll see how close the judiciary, which is the Bar Association, which has already given its, in its House Resolution rules the 
laid down the edict of promotion of sustainability that agrees with this. These judges that you're going to read are on the agenda by, an, by their professional organization, and you'll hear this condition here that they've agreed. And it was but for one little thing, one little hitch in the giddy-up, that we didn't see this go through, even though this should have never went through and got this far. Uh, this is the Ninth Circuit reluctantly dismisses kids' climate case. The Ninth Circuit reluctantly dismisses. That word wasn't just thrown as an opinion. They literally threw that. They reluctantly dismissed the case. And what's astonishing is what they did in this case. That the, let's read from the beginning here on a story reporting on it. Today, a split panel, which is a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. Today, a split, split panel on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit reluctantly dismissed Juliana versus United States, known colloquially as the Kids Climate Case. We should all be thankful for the court's avowed restraint for much of this controversy. Judges in the circuit seemingly champed at the bit to take on central planning of the American economy. So you have to understand the limits of jurisdiction and what they were having to look at. And we're looking also at what the court's going to say is whether or not they can actually engage this type of a case. And going on with what the author is writing in this about this, a big assist is due to the Supreme Court, which bench slapped some sense into the circuit court and this is a serious dynamic uh, this is the how close we are to the destruction and not that I'm embracing any of it because this thing shouldn't have even got where it went and it shouldn't even have been allowed to be here that it was procedural defects that were the bottom line that they denied and dismissed this case on. It's why that's the very foundational preliminary things you have to establish. Here's the backstory of this article, which is kind of important on developing this going through and how close we are with the Ninth Circus deciding these, how close we were to having a case like this go through and impose a fraud on the world and how without a real trial, without a counter proof, Everybody that was on the agenda poured in, and the court took that as a proof in a case to agree that there was a cause. But the problem was they did it before they established the certain jurisdiction from the record. Here's the backstory: In 2015, a group of children filed suit in a federal district court in Oregon, alleging that the federal government infringed on their putative constitutional right to a climate unaffected by anthropogenic global warming. On its face, the kids' case is silly. Now, I'm going to interject here. You're going to find when I read this thing from the court, they didn't think it was so silly at all. And But for this bench slapping to the, that they got from the Supreme Court procedurally, this thing is, wow. I, I just can't tell you, how, almost got chills, almost, how close this thing was with these agenda-driven globalists sitting in your seats of decision of the judiciary. For starters, he says, the case is silly. You'll hear the justices didn't think, so, the, uh, the, the judges in the Ninth Circus didn't, circus, circus didn't, didn't agree with that. Uh, for starters, it's not terribly plausible to claim there's an unenumerated constitutional right to a specific atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases. But let's assume there is, for the sake of argument, what could a court do about it? And this is a, under sub, subtext of this whole case and how close we are that if they're going to go back and work on fixing these two points, the, the two points that we'll, we'll get to, and what I tell you to assert every time in your property so that they can't take it from you. This thing is done and it's taken away from us and they're going to impose punitive harms on everybody. In the way this court still says they can be done, which is actually undone by the money given to the geo geoengineering case before us. So I set that geoengineering payment up to show you something when we get to the organiz uh, the order, the opinion, opinion, not the law, but the opinion. As a remedy, the Julian plaintiff sought the for the court order to court, excuse me, as remedy, the Juliana plaintiffs sought for the court to order the government to draw up a comprehensive climate plan one that is subject to judicial approval and ongoing oversight. The requested relief, therefore, is a court-ordered scheme to regulate the American economy. 
if the plaintiffs had their druthers, a single federal judge court, federal court judge would become, after the president, the most powerful official in the country. Obviously, that's a big practical problem with the plaintiff's argument. From the legal perspective, the Constitution vests Article Three judges with judicial power. Yes, we're back on to this thing. Nationally, national regulatory plans, by contrast, emanate from the legislative or executive powers that are the province of the political branches of government. Simply put, judges have no constitutional authority to initiate and oversee major climate policy. For these reasons, judges in the other circuits have been quick to nix similar challenges. I'm going to stop right there. There's more to read. I want to go back to really what the focus of this is. Remember this legislative and executive powers. They mentioned Article 3. I've talked to you about the problem with this Article 3. I've asked some of, all of you to go read. Some of you have. You've seen exactly what I told you. The problem is jurisdiction and the subject matter over which the court has jurisdiction. We don't even get to the authority here. This is what I was telling you before. You focus on authority, you miss the, you miss the trick. What's their judicial power requires jurisdiction. Then, to what, what, to what extent is their authority within them? So I'm saying this again. If you understand that someone jumps on what's someone's authority, they've asked the wrong question. They're engaging in really an argument that they can't be won in a way. And the, the question is misformed, if not improper. Judicial power. The question is jurisdiction, not authority. And under what? Article 3. So I'm going to end there on the story. You can read more. You really need to read these through. I don't have the, quite the time. Let me go to the, let me go to the uh, opinion. And set this up, and you really have to listen. This is almost terrifying that judges made these statements and allowed this, and how close we are to the subversion of our entire system, notwithstanding this check that happened. And it took a bit, bench slap, if you will. And the Ninth Circus is known for doing this stuff. Clear legal error type things, just facially wrong which I think they're trying to now change me with Trump making more justices that are, and I don't like saying the political side, the Republican, uh, conservatively bent. Uh, that's not good either because that's a political view. Again, see, this is about politics, and you notice what the guy said. This would mean that the judiciary would have oversight on the American economy. I've told you sustainability is all about economy. It's all about the financial structure about risk assessment to that, and who's going to suck the parasitic big sucking sound that comes from that in leverage funding on implementing the technocracy. So that article identified for you, if you didn't pick it up, the this judicial order would be to adjust and, a, and oversight the economy. Okay, That's what sustainability is all about. And to do that, they have to steal all your property or make it so that the evidences are ineffectual, while you'll see in lots of states they don't recognize patents, even though they don't have the authority, the jurisdiction to even say that, as I've exposed to you in one state that shows the judiciary has no power to interpret or, or interfere or alter or abolish or change a patent. And I only say it these ways because that's the objective basis. That's not opinion. You can go find all this stuff yourself and see the bottom line foundation is exclusive in a, a way and not amenable to tertiary governmental interference. In this case notwithstanding the hiccup in the procedures, was about to come and take all that. Here's a reading of the climate change and standing in the summary was written this way in this our opinion, where the, ju the judges in the, just, in the Ninth Circus reluctantly relieved the case, dismissed the case. The panel reversed. The panel was the judges in the Ninth Circus. I'm saying this particularly. Breads and circuses as well here. Ninth Circuit. Remember, we have the district court. Okay. Ninth Circuit is an oversight. It's a review court for the district court. The district court is what, though, folks? The district court, if you go into Title 28, 
and up around 81 to 135 or so, you'll read that there's two district courts. You'll read most of the district courts are legislative courts. Remember that private previous article talked about branches of government and legislative and executive? Most of the United, all United States district courts are legislative courts. They're not constitutional. The court that this came out of was a legislative court, not a constitutional court. What's a constitutional court? As declared by the Supreme Court, a constitutional court is an Article III court. A legislative court is not an Article III court. The Ninth Circus actually cannot review, does not review Article III courts unless it's in one instance, which I've never seen invoked. And that's the, the trick of the the trick of observation there is to find out what it says in Title 28 to 135 and identify the two that are not United States District Courts, the two that are District Courts of the United States, one of which sits at the Ninth Circus. But I think the review of that would be back to the Federal Circuit Court, where that review court is, a, is by its own website, an Article III court, a constitutional court not a legislative court. And so here's a big problem to start with in this case. This will never, ever been discussed. It's over. It's just looked past. People don't even start, begin to see this. It's all written, though. And this is another thing where the Supreme Court failed to identify all this. But here we go. The panel reversed. These judges in the Ninth Circus reversed the district court's interlocutory orders uh, in an action brought by environmental organization and individual plaintiffs against the federal government alleging climate change related injuries to the plaintiffs caused by the federal government continuing to quote permit authorize and subsidize fossil fuel and remanded to the district court with instruction to dismiss for lack of article 3 standing that's what they did it's not what they wanted to do let's go back up did that district court have Article Three standing itself? When you go to Title 28, you can find it's a United States District Court, and so no, it's not a District Court of the United States. There's only two of them. Those are two other places. How do I also know that? Our 2013 lawsuit, we nailed that down, and we got through a quo warranto filed the silence of the judges to declare that they were in an Article Three court and the way the quo warranto works is if you don't warrant your authority, you have none. If you, In this case, you don't warrant your jurisdiction, you have none. And in that case, we also got an order saying that the, the senior judge, which is no judge at all, it's an only administrative official, they'll say he's a judge, but he's not. He's only that in the administrative context, not an Article Three context. He answered to say, yes, I don't have jurisdiction, but I'm going to enter a dismissal anyway. The problem is the rule of the law, the way the law works, the law worked to provide upon default a judgment called default judgment. And so we were at a place where the court tried to interfere and trespassed our constitutional claim. And so when we addressed that, we got confirmation through the failure to answer on by two judges, actually, the chief judge of the district, which was in this court here, uh, that the district court up in, that uh, this went to originally, and another one that it was fa fraudulently transferred to. We got admission through a silence of a quo warranto filing that they have no jurisdiction in, con in a constitutional capacity. So right off the bat, the district court, this Article Three standing was not in a court, an Article Three court when it went back to that district court. And so this is a more technical view that I, I think you all need to, to have, whether or not your eyes have rolled back yet. You've heard me talk about this before. We see the fraud within the orders. And that, if you, I say that you see the fraud, I hope you see the fraud or hear the fraud or hear something not quite right. Well, that guy's got an interesting take. I better go research. I would hope you do even better than that and do that. That we have a problem out the get-go that's being covered up overall. That when these people fix the problem they have, the only other statement you're going to be able to prove is that the court that they're trying to go through can never get the authority that they're asking for the remedy. That they're going to extend to them if they fix the two problems. The court in this case will say that it's not for the judiciary. They'll say it's for whom? 
It's for the legislative. But didn't I just read an article that says the government just appropriated money to go ahead and fulfill this? So let's be careful on what's the government's already ahead of all this, all right? Uh, the, okay, so then so the plaintiffs claimed psychological harms, other impairments for to recreational interests and others exasperated medical conditions and others damage to property. Plaintiffs allegedly alleged violations to their constitutional rights and sought declaratory relief And an injunction, those well, are two actions in the lo uh, available, de declara declaratory judgment and injunction, ordering the government to implement a plan to, quote, phase out fossil fuel emissions and draw down excessive atmospheric brackets carbon dioxide, close quote. The panel held that the record left little basis for denying that climate change was occurring at an increasingly rapid pace. Okay, I just switched here a whole different thing. I hope you picked it up, and I hope your mouth just hit the, hit the table. The panel held, this is now the panel on review of what the district court, forget the jurisdiction question now, now we're to what the holding was. The panel held that the record left little basis for denying the climate change was occurring at an increasingly rapid pace. Copious evidence, evidence, uh, copious expert evidence established that the unprecedented rise in an atmospheric carbon dioxide levels stem from fossil fuel combustion and will wreak havoc on the Earth's climate if unchecked. The record conclusively established that the federal government has long understood the risks of fossil fuel use and increasing carbon dioxide emissions. And the record established that the government's contribution to climate change was not simply a result of inaction. The panel rejected the government's argument that the plaintiff's claims must proceed, if at all, under the Administrative Procedure Act. The panel held that because the APA only allows challenges to discrete agency decisions, the plaintiffs could not effectively pursue their constitutional claims, whatever their merit, under, the stat under that statute. Remember I talked to you about what that means. The panel considered that the three requirements for whether plaintiffs had Article Three standing to pursue their constitutional claims. First, the panel held that the district court correctly found that the plaintiffs claimed concrete and particularized injuries. I need to stop here before we go to the second one. Did the court find the district court was Article Three? Should have been the first statement. In the silence, you shall know them, folks, if you can identify what the silence is. Second now, going on, the, did you get that, folks? This, this panel reviewed the facts evident into evidence. Did you get a say? Would you get a notice to go show up to put your evidence in that this was a fraud? No, this is a set-up case that they found on that record that those climate change is a fraud. I'll tell you, a fraud is undeniable and should work to work against you in policy considerations and administration. They've found this now by this order. To me, this is way beyond uh, this little jurisdictional argument now. It tells you and shows you how they're going to take you down. You will not get a say unless you step up and put your say in and keep vigilant on where that's happening. I, I, I didn't even understand I didn't even understand how they could go this far to come to that conclusion. When you understand that the EPA is the government and the EPA is the fourth, uh, the is a fourth agency, the agency of the four, the third pillar of the UN climate agenda, then you understand that there's a there's a rat inside the, the house here. There's an enemy within the gate. It's what we sued in 2013. How do we do that? Well, we sued the we sued the funding, folks. Remember. And that some of that funding was federal going through the EPA. So the the case in equity, the injunction, extends to all aiders and abettors of the crime against you. I didn't have to sue the EPA then, did I? Well, I didn't I, and I didn't want to, did I? Right? This is the kind of nonsense you get up against. And so, more thought about this. However, get back to this here. They have found it's undeniable that a fraud is capable of working against you. It, it's quite astonishing to me. I don't know about you. I'm just sitting here just being astonished. Second, the panel held that the district court was properly found the Article Three causation. Well, they didn't find whether the district court was Article Three established. We missed that part right there. 
uh, the Article Three causation requirement satisfied the purpose of the summary judgment because there was at least a genuine factual uh, dispute as to whether a host of federal policies were a substantial factor in causing the, pl uh, the plaintiff's injuries. Third, the panel held that plaintiff's claimed injuries were not redressable by an Article Three court. Specifically, the panel held that it was beyond the power of Article Three court to order, design, supervise, or implement the plaintiff's requested remedial plan where an effective plan would necessarily require a host of complex policy decisions entrusted to the wisdom and discretion of the executive and legislative branches. Well, they're giving a lot over by a fraud, aren't they? And the commission of fraud? And not identifying the fraud? And the, so, and the final statement here is that they, the same panel that found that the climate change is undeniable. They found that Article 3 was not actually met. That what they were asking was beyond the powers of Article 3 to provide. And that's one of the things you have to figure out is can a court provide a remedy? That's what they're talking about here. Can what you're being, what you're claiming and suing for is the court empowered in order to give you a remedy? And if it can't find an authority, it cannot take the case. So this is Law 101 condition that Supreme Court had to bench slap the uh, Ninth Circus judges, so-called, to make them look at the basics. Let me offer something to you. There are one thing you get into federal court. Uh, if you look closely, the federal court is actually closed to everybody unless you meet the threshold and can open the door. That's what this case is, is really ultimately about, except the judges went on to make a record that, that the based on the evidence they were given, and I can guarantee you they didn't uh, they didn't entertain any any evidence or or no one knew to entertain or to put in the evidence of that this thing is a that everyone says exists as a fraud or anything else that you can bring forward. No none of that was put in there. But this is how you see a, a test case that was going to get legs had it not been for an oversight based in in due process requirements. Why I tell you to look at those first. The panel reluctantly concluded the plaintiff's case must be made to the political branches or to the electorate at large. So there's the ultimate thing. The, plaintiff, the panel reluctantly concluded what the story before says, that the case must be made to the political branches. They didn't want to give this up either. But because the Supreme Court came back and bench slapped them, although well, no, they can't just do the law, they were going to accept policy. Not law. You didn't hear law is going to be advanced in all this either, did you? No, because it's violative of law. That they were reluctant to relieve the, the relieve the case and dismiss it. The problem for this is, if you read carefully, the political branches are to do this. In the states, they're now bringing carbon tax. That's this case has given that validity. Again, this case validates fraud against all y'all. And you're not you're not speaking up against it. And all I can say is when you don't do that, it comes on you. This is very came on to us very close. I didn't expect it would go this far. I, I, I say that kind of neutrally. All this stuff I expect to finish and beat us down. I mean, because that's the way it seems to work. The judge that was involved in this case under when this was in there was the same judge we avoided because she is uh, Ann Aiken because she's a, a criminal in the office, and she didn't step up and we caught her on an omission to do her duty. And so you, it, it's a never endless, the corruption that's inside the judiciary. If you know it's there, you can anticipate it. I, I can tell you this, this, all the filing that we did only was only within two weeks. And the case was really done in, in the first, first two to three days because it's equity. They didn't answer, default. Had they answered to say they were going to answer in two days, we would have went to five days and to see what their answer was. They didn't do any of that. No, at at fifty at fourteen point four days or so, a judge comes and says, "I don't have jurisdiction, but I'm not going to allow this to go on. I'm going to dismiss it." Uh, too late, judge. You don't have authority. First of all, but too late. More importantly, they defaulted on the second day. Where were you? Where? Where? Why haven't you issued the order? Oh, you don't have jurisdiction. Well, that's okay, because the law provides that it exists anyway as a matter of default, right? And this is what I was telling you before. This is how you get rid of these courts, these corrupt courts. 
We used all the things that are in this case that this court, this Ninth Circus, would have overviewed, reviewed our case had we allowed it to go to review because we were violated. They would have been the same mentality that would have not looked at this Article Three condition that the Supreme Court, after our case, comes out to tell them you can't do it that way. To show you, this is there is a form and there's a function and there's a thing that has to go on. It's important to follow all that. Uh, otherwise, I can only tell you, you're not going to get the answer that you seek, even if you've been harmed and correct and wrongly harmed and rightfully to complain. These judges agree that there's no denying climate change exists. Should be a shocker to y'all. I, I mean, it's a shocker to me. Maybe, maybe I'm just too sensitive. Maybe these judges need to go to Santa Cruz, a short trip south from where they is, and go to Santa Cruz because the Santa Cruz just decriminalized psychedelic mushrooms. And I'd bring this up, and not just for that story. The big sea change in this attitude behind psychoactives is pretty interesting. I've never, again, I've told you, I've never really been into it. They, as a herbal, I guess a herbalist, if I can call myself even that much. I used to do a whole lot more. I don't do too much now, except for what I just need for myself at any time. Uh, they didn't provide, the medicine they provide me wasn't something I ever needed. So I never really got into them because that's where I was focused. I never had any other thoughts of doing anything else. But the sea change and the acknowledged change is the same change of people finally pressing far enough because the government's been hurting them. We finally find out the possibility of psychoactives actually helping people with that need that strong medicine when they have psychological problems. A new resolution has been passed in Central California to decriminalize the use of psychedelic mushrooms I think every cir Ninth Circus judge needs to go to that county and participate and then go back up and start writing their, their orders and see if we can get something straightened up in their mind about how it's supposed to be. My point here on this is just like you heard, the court was bench slapped to say, well, we have to do this policy by the legislature or the executive is the same thing that Santa Cruz does to get rid of the nonsense about the psychedelics and just go ahead and the people give themselves the right to do so. Prohibit the government to do so. It's the same theory I've been telling you. If you want something to happen, jump in, make laws to make it okay. Make laws that makes it not okay for the government. Where psychedelic mushrooms in this case were not allowed, now it's okay because someone said it was okay. I've told you you're going to have to set up, go in and make laws. Not vote. You go in and make get get the seat of decision to make a law in order to do what you need done. That does take some persuasion. It does take time. How do you think we got the smoke ordinance in? Excuse me, the smoke proclamation which stopped the fires in the West, uh, the, in the state to, uh, where I'm at. Because we have people working diligently and persistently to, to get that, and we have to look at the dynamic, and we took advantage of the fact that no one had an answer and there was n no one could see anything. It completely smoked out all summer, and people were ha had had it. Now, if you're a po um, an educated populist, maybe you don't have to push, wait for that wall to be start to be leaned on. Maybe you can do it a little bit quicker. But this is up to the people. Do you think they say legislative and uh, executive? You don't have a say. This this story from Santa Cruz. Just, I was laughing when I came out. Not only did I, this Ninth Circus justices need to go to Santa Cruz and partake, and then go back to San, San Francisco and start thinking about it. What they need to do is they need to understand. You need to understand that you can make laws and end the nonsense, end the constraints, end the ability of the government to beat you down and put you in a cage. It's only death and taxes we're told. And then all of a sudden I hear Texas. Not taxes. Texas prohibits income tax. And I wonder now what our complaints are. The courts are so close to putting on punitive harm to you through an, uh, an invasion of a foreign enemy domestically allowed. And you're going to sit by and be crickets when right here we see evidence. That you want what we used to be in the last few years to be a, v a class one beat you down drug, put you in jail forever is now being authorized by a local jurisdiction. When you can go and see that proof that the power is in the people that way and stop giving criticism and lip service to that power and actually just embrace it and go after it because these other people are coming at you. 
This is the, these other people are the stock, or the stakeholders, folks. They're the Genghis Khan. They're the horde, and they use. They're not. They're un, not bashful to use kids, human shields, to advance their cause. I hope you didn't miss that one. The kids climate thing. You, you think that was not a promotion? You think the kids were making these arguments? This is the war. And so Santa Cruz de decriminalized uh, psychedelic, again, decriminalizes. It wasn't uh, non, non-criminal what they did. And in the face, I think, of a state, of a, of a class one drug at the federal level, what they did locally is they decriminalized it to me. Uh, I think it's only an infraction because if they took off the wraps, then the federal government could still come down and say that they have theirs. When you make it local and that hasn't been determined to be unlawful, that penalty, then that's the limit of your penalty. That's another way to mitigate the harm that's being imposed upon you. Now, I'm sure those folks in Santa Cruz would embrace climate change, but uh, anyway, you know, this is the this is the weirdness of people, the foibles of people. So you have it in the power. They talked about in this court case that that the political uh, engine, the executive and legislative engines, need to be invoked in order to do a climate change policy. I'm telling you, in this climate taxation, this carbon taxation, is that. The funding, the appropriation of money to a, geo, a geoengineering climate change purpose is Congress going ahead and giving license to this fraud against you. They're already doing what the what the court said was not within their power to do. And this, but you don't may, may or may not see it that way. The, the appropriations of money is what does it does that. This the way you stop it is exemplified right here. Something the psychedelic mushrooms. Well, at least I say mitigate. I should say mitigate. It doesn't stop it is to, say, take a class one drug substance and make the penalty to the locals, and this could be local to state and everything, to be something far less than uh, than it was if you don't. And if you don't, well, I'm asking why not? If you don't want to pay taxes, then outlaw taxes. Why aren't you doing that? Why do you make excuses around it? So getting back to, we have the power to stop of this, Getting back to how close the judiciary is in this country to going ahead and foisting a foreign enemy upon you through domestic domestic agents. The method that we talk about through that is technocracy, the tool that they use to keep track. That's that S-M-A-R-T application. The foreign invasion that's, that we don't understand is, is coming in, breaking through the what's supposed to be a border to keep it up protected, proving why you really need jurisdictions, is again being broken down to advance this, this thing that climate change is only one part of. We're looking at sustainability in a larger sense. A UK police will soon be able to search through US data without asking a judge. Now, when you, again, I ask, if you uh, think that there's a constitution working that says that you should be secure in your papers, and someone can do policy or legislative or executive license somehow to disregard that, do you still have that protection? And if you don't, haven't you just recognized the maladministration we can identify in Virginia relative to the, uh, the people, so-called the representatives there? is the same method that I'm looking at here. UK will soon be able to search through U.S. databases. Will you step up and stop this? They're going to a judge to do this. Law enforcement officials in the U.S. and U.K. have negotiated a deal that sells out the privacy rights of the public to both nations. Sell out the privacy rights. You think your local DMV doesn't do that already to third parties? Big data to third parties? The public-private partnership that's used to parasitically eat from your life. Now this is going international. Now, for those of you that don't travel international, maybe that's not a problem, but for those of you that do, the UK can get the information, and then guess what we've been told that they do? They then hand it back, because the courts have allowed that if a third party finds the information, they can hand it back to the jurisdiction that's coming after you. If you think this is this is like a billiard, billiard ball shot, if you don't think this is the for, uh, coming against you, why it's so important? The court comes up and says, well, we would agree that this is, needs to be imposed, but the, the law limits us. We cannot keep over this. But we will tell you in this order that there's two other branches that can. Here is that they, the one of the branches, the judicial branch, is being asked by the executive, the other branch that they say can do it. 
to get the permission from the one of them, the executive branch, is asking to for an end around, which the courts have already given them, partly through what? That fraud called national security. Law enforcement officials of the U.S. have negotiated as a deal, that's the executive, right? A deal that sell the privacy rights. It's all commerce still. They're selling this information as well. What they're not telling you, they're going to get this information from the third party, the same people they've given license to come in. Why? Because the U.K. wouldn't necessarily be doing any law enforcement here, would they? Anyway, you read all this, I'm just, I'm kind of, I get kind of disgusted, and dismayed, disgusted, and if we don't step up to start, well, understand it and start working in places to offset it if in the, or mitigate it or then stop it ultimately, I don't know why the we don't we won't be living in the future that we heard before where you're going to be told to take off all your clothes and that's not a strip search. Leaked documents exposes the secretive market for your web browsing data. So if they're not going to get it from the courts, uh, again the private parties are going to be the worst of it. They're going to get you're going to get it through your through your web browsing. And I, I, a long time ago, I read, again, I'm, I'm one of those weirdo, nerd, geek, whatever, whatever you call me. I read, I read the fine print. For the most part. And, uh, I mean, this is maybe 90% of the fine print that you get with pro products that you get for the internet. Leaked documents expose a secretive market for your web browsing. If you don't live in, a, if you don't think you live in a consumer society, it's all about you consuming and someone parasitically feeding from you to get you to consume some more. It's like a tapeworm, I suppose. The There's a uh, an antivirus program used by hundreds of millions of people around the world is selling highly sensitive web browsing data to many of the world's biggest companies. A joint investigation of Motherboard and PCM Mag has found. i just get to the nubbins of this. It was, uh, it was Avast and then AVG. And they're working together with a company called JumpShot for data collection. And uh, these antiviral prog virus programs... In this case, these three, or two, with a program module called Jump Shot, is collecting up your data to sell it to other people, come in and influence you, and influence your browsing, and influence whatever, however they're doing this. A uh, third party getting this information would also be available to the government. When I read the fine print on the Avast, it was the first call, I stopped using Avast, because if you read carefully, and it didn't really have to read so carefully, they, this was not going to be confined to their use, and it was actually, there was for data collection. So this wasn't even a surprise. It just took how many years? Years here to come and tell you out in the public that's been going on. The other program I used to use was AVG. Their their privacy policy changed. I stopped using that. Now, well, okay, so I'll just leave it right there. And so this is these free things are not necessarily free. The point is, is the, this is about data collection. This is about imposing what the courts are now willing and able to impose upon you. If you think carbon carbon taxation is not going to be far away from your computer or your iPhone or your Android or whatever in, in documenting your carbon loading on the system, that's undeniable the cause that allow that Congress has already appropriated money to come in and make uh, an environment colder that they have no clue about. As I told you, the real problem is if you misdiagnose this, you kill people off which is part of the plan, it seems. Remember the Georgia Guidestones? We can go through this. All you, I'm singing to the choir, most of you that know this. It, it, it just sits there. I just, Why do we want to talk about it? What are you going to do about it, I guess I keep getting at. So here are these antivirus programs. All these programs are sucking your life away with data. You don't think it's important. They make lots of money. This is a big economy. And what, what you don't understand is, the, is the, the pass back through to whom will work with the data against you that you don't know more example of this, you Avast, AVG, Jump Shot. Um, again, the, it was right in their privacy policies. It's w partly why I don't understand what our problem is. It's a self-inflicted wound. They're telling us how they're doing it to us, and we keep engaging. Now, I guess, I, should I say, uh, can I say, or should I say, is it hard, to, uh, should I, is it needed to be said, like RLM? I don't know of any actual tracking that's going on, like with the RLM. You, you come and you listen. You can click and you can find things to go do. You, yeah, you can get on Amazon, I guess, and give a little bit through your purchases through that. I guess there's some of that. You can do the, the crypto coins. For those of you in the crypto side, I think Grimner takes those. But there's not really, the, I don't know of any tracking that's going on. Why aren't we promoting more of those websites? It is kind of a fascination. 
However, uh, there's these companies that we millions and millions are being being duped, I suppose, uh, and can being controlled by the digital world that the 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 Ninth Circus judge judges, notwithstanding their reluctance to dismiss the case under Article Three, which they never discuss actually, uh, they uh, they would have passed this thing through to be a punitive harm on you. The imposition of the regulation of which would be digital leashes for every one of you. I don't know if you truly appreciate how this works through, but that's where it goes. And then we get back to last week when I was, or week before, no, well, last week I guess, where I was showing you the World Economic Forum and their framework and their tools for their their own currency, their own uh, their own uh, digital currency. That's that's all ties back in through all this stuff. There's going to be there's going to be uh, what do they call um, witnesses against you everywhere uh, and if they don't like it or they want to cut your life out and this is i'm bringing this stuff up in this technocratic view where the government the judges have already agreed it's undeniable you have to be uh, you're pu you're a punitive harm to the world so we're going to punitively harm you without jurisdiction for all this stuff even if it was article three they got no other jurisdiction either uh, if you think going into this digital world without question or you think digital currencies are uh, way to go, or you think that, uh, oh, this is a, oh, we missed the bullet, so we're okay for a while. If you don't think that there's a control structure already built in, and we hear the evidences of it, here's another evidence that you can be cut out one day, and if your life is stuck around your digital uh, instrumentation, uh, your your coinage, your currency, your social credit, if you think that's a constant, which we already, we already know it's not. I mean, look, at I got knocked off the internet because I couldn't get a service provider to get us back on in time all right so this is that simple well the government can sit there and do it on purpose it, how india the world's largest democracy shuts down the internet story tells you all about it got a picture of a bunch of people with laptops with a forlorn look on their face with their laptops open they can't get on the internet for six months they couldn't get on when the government officials of India decided to shut down the Internet, software engineers working at, uh, on IT and data analytics firm lost half a day's work and fell behind in delivering a project for clients based in London. Your, global, your globalism is going on right there, folks. The hotel was unable to pay its employees or manage online bookings for tourists. A major hospital delayed staff salary payments and restricted its medical services to outpatient and emergency departments. Oh, no medical care either. And the government is okay with that in India. These, are, to me, are just telegraphing what your future is going to be like. Now, we're talking about the whole Internet being shut down. They can do that individually to any one of you. So keep going down and keep allowing all this technology we built in without objection. The silence is your consent. Don't engage these people. And the future that some somebody else has planned was going to come upon you. I think a colleague of mine, he just got a new phone. We can't, he can't figure out how to make it ring, let alone, I mean, know what's going on with it. I don't know about all that. I don't have one. But the, the point is, this is a, you've got technology that's outside of your control, and you've got governments willing to shut you down. Here's another proof. People don't really know what to do about it. I, you know, I keep thinking, well, maybe there's other technology. We talked about meshing and all that stuff, I suppose. But that means that you have to invest, donate into a mesh system and trust it. And so it's not so simple. There are things that are going on, uh, I mean, that you can do, but it's not so simple. And they give themselves license to do all kinds of things. And then the, to me, this is like the coronavirus are shutting down. This is just another digital martial law. Because some political party came in and they didn't like people talking about what whatever was going on. They just shut the whole thing down. Now, that's quite a drastic thing. You might think it can't happen. But we don't know what excuses they may you may they may develop for why it has to happen. It happens occasionally, but, but it, do you want to dedicate your life to this this technocratic world that the courts are so close to allowing? Ah, boy, I don't even know. I mean, that should be a self-evident answer. And so I keep coming back to what are you going to do? Okay, so now you know you don't want to do that, but they're there. So what are you going to do about stuff like this? What are you going to do about? Not only do they have the right of control of your lives, but they have the right of control because they own that. That is their jurisdiction now. It's their digital realm, digital domain. Your free dom is inside that, and they control it. 
that they decide you need particular things. We get more evidence of this here in a story that's been uh, I've had up for a while. A secretary, a DHS secretary, allowing citizens to get regular driver's license puts people at risk. How ludicrous is that? But this is what the government's willing to advance. How stupid this is that they'll advance this, and that's what they put the pressure on. This has to do with your real ID. This has to do with an interaction with digital uh, identities uh, globally. The, the real ID happens to be also what ends up tying into your passports. It's all commerce as well. We talk, I've talked about it over and over. But the DHS is is, is uh, not bashful to assert to a state that a regular driver's license will put people at risk. I, mean, I don't even know what more to say. I don't even know how to approach that. How asinine is that? And yet they're willing to do it like the other case. Oh, we... Took all the woman's clothes off, but it wasn't a strip search. And they force you to go argue that. A few weeks ago, DHS took the absurdity to uh, to a whole new level in New Jersey. DHS told residents that allowing people on an alternative real ID license would put citizens and police officers' lives in danger. Why? Because the state had the audacity to ignore Homeland Security, the TSA, by giving residents a choice between real ID licenses and regular life driver's licenses that have been in use for approximately 107 years. The DHS and the TSA, well, we just heard how ridiculous the excuses are. They're involved here in this story. DHS and TSA law enforcement continuously cry wolf whenever a state pushes back against real ID. Remember, 2020 was when it broke over, that there was not going to be any others that would be recognized. Apparently, that's not the truth, is it? Otherwise, they wouldn't have a problem. You would just use your regular identity, your regular driver's license, the commerce document that it is, and you would be able to still use it, wouldn't you? And so there's another lie inside of here. But this is where it goes. You hear TSA will say they can strip down a woman, and that's not a strip search. Here they say your regular driver's license, even if you agree to one, even if you are doing that, would threaten officers. Apparently, officers have been threatened by that document the entire time. Guess what? The state issued it. So it's not you threatening me, but you're going to pay the price, aren't, aren't you? Now, they fear for their life because you now produced a regular license. Again, it's beyond absurdity. And so people that see this, there's a two tracks on this. There's those that could be involved and be in the commerce side that don't that can argue this is beyond what is minimally required or because it hasn't done any of that and they're just using this as a fraud, wasting people's time, threatening people with no reason. And you come with the authority to show that they don't have the right to do that because they're not working in the minimum required to do whatever they're after. You come with that word in your mouth, you start making the issue. The other track is they're the whole of the state and the federal government are working in collusion to make you believe you have to have this driver's license to travel. As I've shown you, if you go to your road law, not the motor vehicle code, you can show where the grants are there for the use of the highway, and you get back to the evidence of the patent of land that those roads are attached to, and there's an appurtenant right of ingress and agreement, ingress and egress to those roads that is not subject to the, to the motor vehicle code. So however to either track you want to take, it negates what they're saying. But you're living in a government with an with a occupier that's willing to do the absurdities to keep control of you or keep control of the states. And you've got a couple states out there that are just not moving along with it. In fact, they did do a little bit of it. They said, well, we're going to give, a, give you a choice. They didn't tell people that they're violating them in their right of ingress and egress on their own highways. No, they didn't tell them that. But they said, we're going to have a, you get a choice of the evils that we will be put on you. And I, I hear crickets all this. It's pretty astounding, I guess. So I keep going back to that. I don't know really what to do about that. I just I keep identifying it. And the importance of this digital connection is always in the record, in the news, the notice to us. Uh, the Again, uh, you know, if they're not going to hold the records tight, uh, well, then you see that the National Archive, the highest level of you, you think records that you would want, is willing to make some uh, some alterations to documentation. Uh, the states get the link, uh, the, get the lead of it. Uh, y your digital world is just a uh, just going to be talk about anarchy, talk about chaos. That definition, not the one that where political anarchy means communism. 
Now, I went through all that definition, too. People just want to tell themselves stories. Seattle is the first area in the U.S. where residents can vote via smartphones. Smart is not too intelligent. Smart is sustainable mitigation, adaption, resilience, and transformation. Uh, Bloomberg, again, the, the nemesis of Virginia and the amount of information of a, uh, amount of money a foreigner can dump into a system is in this story. The interesting part was the name of uh, Bradley Tusk is made. Uh, I just give you a, the Cryptagon again, Cryptagon link, talking about someone named Bradley Tusk. Uh, Bradley Tusk is involved with uh, Bloomberg. He's involved with Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Schumer. He's involved with Google. Comcast, Walmart, AT&T, Pepsi, Rockefeller Foundation, Stanford Linear Accelerator, Stanford University, and their Linear Accelerator. Remember those little bitty, those little bitty models they were going to make. <laughs> Texas A&M. Remember that's where the that's Texas A&M where where the uh, Secretary of State went and said we uh, when I was in the CIA we robbed, cheat, cheated, and whatever. We lied, cheated, and stole everything, right? Texas A&M. Remember, all oh, tied in with this guy is part of the implementation of getting Seattle, those of you in Washington, Seattle residents to vote by smartphones. If you don't think your whole voting has been co-opted, and for those of you that never agreed with it, you probably don't care anyway. There, there, is, a, there is a value to it, and, but you, you have to be, it's part of a, an ongoing thing where you're doing an alternative as well, more more what I was, would tell you. Those that have the franchise, use it. Why not? Those that don't, then you work, you don't, to myself, I don't care who's in the office, because remember, I understand the way the republic is organized is there's a hands-off place, and you can catch anybody who wants to reach down, the, or actually they're reaching up out of the stinking abyss, wants to touch production, you can, you can grab them. You can whack their arm off for trying to reach into the production. It's a place that is attached to the law of the land that they can't touch. Government, again, in Virginia, the posterity came from that didn't come from the tertiary establishment of the government or the courts. All right? So we you start understanding the hierarchy of this government relative to the republic that was made and the evidences that paper that we have, the evidences that re show the distinction. You under, start to understand, I hope, better how this thing works out and how when you see digital application for voting is uh, breads and circuses imposition upon us when we talk about voting at all is just a bunch of people walking into the foreign invasion willingly and utilizing these agents that are with all the same people and companies in destroying you that always that all will you look at every website that, that you go to there they will all sing the praises of uh, sustainability and consensus and uh, kumbaya well I guess I'll just say it that way and so it's the takedown relative to the subject matter I've talked about today reduces down to these digital devices and digital technology and the control of that that you're you're allowing because of your inaction because I can't imagine just a few people in the city council that agree to sustainability and I think we've heard this for years and years and years through Nikki Raapana where she was up there battling this out and finally left. I mean, you can only do this for so long. I get that. And no no discredit at all for what she did. This was a heart, the heart of, of sustainability up in Seattle. But the people are just the sheep of that, if you will. The, 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 the lambs to slaughter are just going with a few people that the m mass of people could end really quickly if they stopped to think about, if they could think, if the soybean oil they're using isn't destroying them, then they could think about how this is how this is not working. But you see, even in the franchise of voting, it's being digitized. It's being everything's being folded into this one tech, I guess, a technocratic uh, control grid, control feature. How is the voting? How is how are they going to keep that separate from your social credit on the same device, from your world financial? construct toolkit coin and everything else that they're tying together is beyond me. I, I don't know how you justify those things. They're not on us quite yet. But here's the evidence that it's right around the corner. In a way, I was really shocked by the opinion of the kids' climate change suit, not because they, oh, not be, not by the overturning. It was because they actually made a decision to 
to take the evidence and agree that the evidence was all there was. And that clearly showed that there couldn't be denying the fraud we know as climate change, the political weapon. That, that was a, really a shocker. Normally, you just the courts would just go through and show the procedural problems, and that would be the end of it. They took special pains to explain that there's evidence that it's existing. A fraud. Your judiciary just agreed to a fraud. That's not a surprise to me either, because why? The, 22, the 2013 lawsuit, we said the Bar Association and its members take every opportunity and impose sustainable development. They recognize no property. They recognize no constitutional limitations. They recognize no law, uh, nothing that may be considered law. In fact, we uh, adv the consensus process is one that cautions their uh, practitioners that they they come by no law. They come adjunct to that. There is no lawfulness to what they do, and this is what was speaking to where the comp the legislature or the executive is is empowered, not the judiciary, to implement this against you. But when I see, like, the Virginia Constitution, and said, well, the people, the posterity can't be harmed, what the heck's the question anymore? When I see evidence in Texas to get rid of the taxes, I say, what's the, what's the question anymore? When I see Sa Santa, Santa Cruz minimizing, because of the, the federal pressure, minimizing to a very minor degree, mitigating the harm because of the federal pressure to someone who has psychedelic mushrooms, I'm asking... What's our problem? Why do we have these problems? It is the cricket. It's just us. It's just self-inflicted wounds. I don't really know where else to put it. Maybe someone can answer that. What, what, is, what is another reason for why the way the place is constructed is the people step up and say, we're not going to take that no more. And that when they don't do it, those that are in the system, do it and take advantage. That when the people can step up and say they aren't, they don't want to take it anymore and they don't, what's their complaint? And is there anything then to do about it? That we still have a complaint. And then those inside that, that insanity complain that government's a bad thing. Historically, so far, even with its failings, it's about as, about as good as we can get at this point. I've identified where you can find yourself distinct from the government class. That was never done anywhere. And we don't even opt for that. We, inside the government class, we can say, stop it. We don't opt for that. And that we'll call that system no good because we didn't opt for any of it. And then we're still having to suffer it isn't making a whole lot of sense anymore. At least to me. Can cops secretly record your home for eight months without a, without a warrant? This is a little bit of a story. The collection of get data, the ability to make up stuff, the ma make the record they need in order to collect you up, has limits. Even still, and uh, the pushback is that anybody has makes that challenge and we see here the First Circuit in review. Yesterday, the First Circuit became the first federal court of appeals to hear oral arguments on the constitutionality of warrantless placement of secret video camera on top of a utility pole after UCL, ACLU's 2018 victory in the Supreme Court of Car case of Carpenter versus United States. Carpenter represents a growing recognition that we have a right to be free from long-term surveillance that catalogs the whole of our physical movements, even in a public place. Yesterday's oral arguments, the United States versus Moore Bush, focused on Carpenter's impact on people, on a person's, on a person's expectation of privacy against the placement of a video uh, directed at a home for eight months without any judicial oversight. The Supreme Court has long viewed that home as a core of the Fourth Amendment protection. Now, that's got to be a, a, I know that's what it says. Have you been seeing that's been an agreement with courts that have allowed warrantless smashing and destroying and killing? I don't think so. But we'll go with it for this story. The Supreme Court has long viewed that the home as a core of the Fourth Amendment protection, but new technologies are testing the boundaries of our 
right to privacy in our private space. Now, let me just stop here. Okay, so the court's going to make these decisions. Again, they're the bar. They've already agreed that climate change is something that needs to be surveilled upon you because you're just a carbon unit that's harming Gaia. I don't know how this goes down the road any better than that. You can step up and make in the states, in your, I mean, in your counties, in your cities, you can make this all unlawful. And I would say add a penalty that if it happens and they come after you, there's a right of remedy. We can sit here and take it. We can wait till it goes to an, a complicit judiciary, or we can take responsibility for a lot of this. This is here and argued because this is setting the stage. Like that climate policy, you aren't going to have a say in it, and a decision will be made without any actual counter input other than the input of the stakeholder. Again, silence is your consent. The gathering of this information, of keeping the pulse of you, the ability to get information to make stuff up over a, a turn, forever, depending on your forever, is uh, is the counter is the counter reality, if you will, that is being created. Partly why they want you in these confined places. Partly what the res response by people going back out is there's that natural dynamic that's going to follow them you take your problems with you why this starts to become more important it, it may not be happening we have lots of cameras where i'm at and maybe only in the big cities but the big cities people are coming out to where you live and there's no sense in people the court there's no sense in the courts there's no law in the courts they had to be bench slapped for them to be law can the cops secretly record? That's a question. Why was that a question? You should just, if that became a question, there should be someone down to make, a bunch of people going down to make a law. As I told you, stop the cops from killing you. Stop the government from surveilling you. Stop them from taxing you. Stop them from taking from you. Well, where am I going to get it? You get it from the industry, the um, industry in the tertiary economy. You, you, if you, you tax them because they're the ones that are getting the benefit of the establishment of government. That's where the taxes come from. Want more information from everywhere. Uh, older older story, patent. Rivian's another patent. Letters patent. They're in the Constitution. Rivian's new guardian mode will safely move passengers without any pre driver present. Just what I told you is going to be happening, folks. You're going to have a driver in guardian mode. The guardian's going to be the state. They don't like what you did on your social credit. They want to cut you out. You end up on the door of the sheriff's office or the, state, or the city police or the state police. Guardian mode. It's already been built into the cars. I predicted this would happen here what, you know, years ago. A stolen car. A, dri a stolen car driver stopped electronically in Washington. Okay, they stop you, and then Guardian Mode kits in and takes you to the cops. For whatever reason, they fabricated because of these, these cameras that you didn't outlaw against you. Because of the data acquisition, you didn't outlaw against you. The taxes you were allowed that you didn't pay because you didn't outlaw them against you. It looks like a pretty bleak world, except I keep saying that you allowed that against you. My hands are, I don't know what to do. I have my hands are tied when you say, okay. Whether that's by your silence or the presumption of a, of a superior force against you, ha even has no right, the occupier. Grimmer, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Hope something I said, uh, folks, uh, gets you thinking and gets you activated to do something somewhere. Uh, all you, uh, all everybody that's out there redistributing the, the broadcast and thumbs up and and commenting more importantly i like to see some of the comments all of the comments to see where we're at i appreciate all that you all do there uh, and all the support that we get and the donations again folks is what you can do this is the month of donations send them on over to reallibertymedia.com and grimner and uh, the, i don't know he's got all the facility there to pull all that up together i'll be with you next week tech this or nature willing well that's another lesson I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>